Today I'm going to be trying something a little bit different. I'm going to try to implement as many of the basic mechanics as I can from the Zelda games. The Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages games were some of my favorite in the series. To start with, I have a sprite sheet here. This is actually from an asset bundle called uh, World of Solaria. I'll put a link in the description below. And for now, I'm just going to be implementing the animations for the idle and moving parts of the sheet. To start th with, this looks a little blurry, so we need to re-import it as a 2D pixel. All right, that's a bit better. Now let's go ahead and create the scene that represents the hero. I'll call it Hero. I'm going to make the root node a kinematic body because that gives us collision with walls for free. Now we can add a sprite and we can slice it up. It looks like this has eight horizontal frames and 16 vertical frames. And there we have our hero. We can also add a collider right now since we might as well. So collision shape 2D. And for now, let's just make it a box. And there we go. Next, we need to animate this. There are two things that we have to look at. First of all, is the character moving or not? If it's not moving, we want to use the idle sprites. If it is moving, we want to use the walking sprites. But also, because this is a top-down perspective, we need to worry about which direction is the character moving. So what I'm actually going to do is to slice this up into a series of eight atlas textures, one for each direction of the idle animation and one for each direction of the moving animation. And then we can programmatically switch depending on the direction and motion of the character. I will be creating a new resource, and it's going to be an atlas texture and we'll call it up. And I'm going to create a folder called idle, which will hold the idle animations. The way that an atlas texture works is we take a raw texture and we place it in the atlas, and then we can define a specific region of that texture, and the atlas texture will just be that region. So for example, for the animation where the hero is idle and facing in the upward direction, we can see that the coordinates are 16 times three down, and then the width of this region is 16 times four and the height is just 16. And then I'll just create the down, left, and right directions. All right, and now we have all four of the idle animations, one for each direction. Instead of having the whole sprite sheet, we can just plug in the down direction, and of course we'll change horizontal frames to four and vertical frames to one. And then to animate this, we can simply add an animation player call it frame animator, we'll create a new animation, we'll name it playing, I suppose. And then we can just add a frame track. I'm not sure how fast we want this, but let's just start at 0.5 seconds for a loop. And we can just increment the frame here each time. And so the next step is to swap out the texture here based on the direction that the hero is facing. To do this, we're going to need to create a script for the hero. The first thing that the script needs to know is what the textures are for each of the directions. So let's create an export variable, and then we can plug those in. We'll call it idle textures. And it will be an array, and we can give a type hint here. Now this is where things do get slightly annoying because if we go back to the inspector here, uh, we can see that the array size is zero and we can of course add four slots, but we can't actually just drag these in here. We have to first set them to be the appropriate type. So what we can do here as a hack to autofill with the right number of slots of the right types is we can just create an empty atlas texture and preload that here. So let's say new resource, atlas texture. We'll just call it atlas.resource. We'll copy the path here, and then we'll just preload it four times. And now if we go and look again in the inspector, we can see that we have four atlas textures as the defaults, and we can just overwrite those right and up. Now, since this is an array, we are going to have to remember the order of these, which is slightly annoying, so why don't we make an enumeration to track it for us? The order of indices is down, left, right, up, so we'll just make an enum, down, left, 
right up. We also need to keep track of which direction the character is facing. And I think probably the easiest way to do this is just with a vector 2. So let's add facing equals vector 2. And we'll just start with it being down. Let's also just create a variable to track the sprite node that we're using. We'll call it hero sprite. We'll make it an on ready var so that uh, when the scene is readied, it will automatically be set to be equal to the sprite. Uh, and then of course the frame animator, we can do the same thing. And now we add the code that ensures that the texture we're using matches the direction we're facing. We'll call it set texture and we can simply match the facing so for example, if the facing is down, then we want to use idle textures down. And we can do that with the other three directions. And uh, in each case, we want to set the sprite's texture to be whatever that is. So hero sprite dot texture equals this, paste that four times. And we can call set texture in the physics process and there we go. Uh, if we want to test this, one easy way is we can export the facing var variable. All right, and I'm just going to add a camera so that we can see the hero properly. Uh, camera is a little big, so let's let's zoom in pretty close. Oh, and the last thing we need to do also is start the frame animator playing when we start the scene. All right, there's our hero, and if we change this to be say negative one aka up, then when we launch the scene we get the hero facing up. But now what if we want the hero to be walking? The first thing we need to do is create another array of textures. Uh, we'll call these walk textures. And then we also need to create the corresponding atlas textures. We can just add 4 times 16 to each of these. And then we just slot those into these four slots in walk textures. Then we can create another variable. I'll just make an export variable for testing purposes. We'll call it movement. And we can just make it an enumeration for now. So we'll say we have idle and we have walk. Movement will start out as idle. And so then when we set the texture, we can first choose the array. So we can say texture array. And then actually a simple way to select the one we want is just put the idle textures and the walking textures into an array and then use the movement as the index to select the one we want. Then instead of referring to uh, idle textures here, we can refer to texture array, which will either be the idle texture array or the walking texture array, depending on what type of movement we're using. Actually, there's an even easier way to test this with, without having to start it all the time. We can just make this a tool. What it means for it to be a tool is that the functions will be called in the editor, uh, not just when we go to debug it. So for example, physics process will be called every physics frame, even when we're looking at it in the editor, which means that we can now go here and uh, just going to reload this. And now if we go down here to movement, we can change it to one, which is the enumeration for walking and the character walks. And we can also change the direction. So to the right or to the left or up or down. As you can see, this lets us switch between lots of different types of animations across several different axes, uh, and it lets us do all of that with uh, relatively few lines of code, just by swapping out the array of textures that we're drawing from and matching the direction to the member of that array. So now we have the animations for the character. Uh, next time, we'll see about implementing actual movement controls. Thanks for watching.